Look at this. Look how big this damn thing is. I just wanted a regular energy drink and now I got a 40. Son of a gun. All right, hey, what's going on Wednesday morning as I begin this and leaving from Lowe's. A little throwback to the Joe Does Stuff days. Man, got a busy day today. Uh, where do I even begin? Uh, we started on the residential job this week and I have to tell you that thing has been a little hectic thus far. Hell of a lot of work, hell of a lot of prep work. We've got the house pressure washed and yesterday we put in a full day of prepping, my guys did. Um, and they ran through an entire box of caulk, uh, prepping this wood, grind, grinding, sanding, scraping, caulking, repairing, replacing. Anyway, so we've got the residential job going on right this second and so much stuff that we're trying to do here on After Prison Show. Uh, we've been filming videos, trying to film videos, I wish I would have shared more about what took place yesterday, but maybe I'll get a chance to recap on some of that later on or in another video. I don't want to make this too long right this second. I need this to just be an intro or a beginning for a video that we're hopefully going to be able to share with you guys and we should be able to share with you guys. So again, like I said, today is Wednesday. I haven't given you guys any type of an update in terms of what's going on with Lucky since we dropped him off at the program on Friday. Yesterday would be the first time that I heard from him uh, since he's been there and he's been there and he's also supposed to get released today. Now on this past Saturday I would go and get him some clothes, some t-shirts, boxers, socks, a couple of books. I took that up to him on Saturday, but I wasn't able to talk with him. I was only able to drop that stuff off for him. He told me yesterday that he got the things. And more important than any of that is the fact that this man has stayed in this program. Um, they are releasing him today. He's not getting released against medical advice. He has detoxed. He said yesterday he's still feeling kind of sick and a, and a little rough. But he's anticipating and hoping that today, you know, he's feeling well enough to leave. Now, I had talked with Lucky about going to the program only being half of his battle. The bigger half, or I guess the other half, is going to be what's going to happen when he gets released. Tom and I have done a lot of research and a lot of legwork to try to provide opportunities and places for Lucky to be able to go when he's released. But he told me yesterday that he's going back to Portsmouth. He's going to go live with a friend of his and that friend's mother, and this is a clean environment for him. Now, you know as well as I do that him going back to the same old location probably is not the best idea. He definitely wants to see Kurt. Since filming uh, the video and sharing it with you guys, you know, lucky going into the program, I've seen Kurt twice. I saw him on Sunday. He was sitting out in the spot that I usually find lucky at. He was not looking too good, but he was doing, I guess, the best that he can do. I gave him a couple of dollars. I told him, hey, look, I want to keep in contact with you as well. And if there's anything that I can do to help you, here's my phone number. You know, just because we're helping Lucky doesn't mean that the offer is not extended to you as well. But Kurt's in a different situation. He doesn't really seem like he wants the help right this second. Maybe he does and he just doesn't know how to get it. I honestly don't know. I would see Kurt a couple of days later. I think it was on Monday that I last saw him, and he was at a different location. I, I ran across him by happenstance, and I actually brought him some lunch. And as a matter of fact, when I brought him lunch, oh, where is it? I know I didn't take it out of the truck. Ah, it's right here. When I brought him lunch, he actually gave me this. He gave me a piece of artwork that he was drawing out there. So make sure you guys can see that real good. Pretty cool. But there's a lot of other stuff that's going on right this second with videos and video ideas and things that we're working on that we haven't even had the opportunity to share with you guys. I've got so much to try to get done today. Get this residential job set up. Lucky's probably getting released today. Got to go pick him up. Got another, like, two 
big video projects that we're working on that we need to get with today. And I just don't know if there's going to be enough time in the day. We're going to see where this goes, see where what we can get accomplished today. And we begin from here, 8 o'clock in the morning, Wednesday. God only knows how today's going to play out. But hopefully, it plays out good. Hey there. 9-11 uh, in the morning, and I was just sitting in dead stopped traffic uh, on my way to go get up with Tom. Just got a chance to get the residential job set up and squared away. Got my guys on that. Spoke with the homeowner. Today is day number three that we're on that job. And homeowner seems very happy with what we're doing over there. It is a ass load of work. We're literally still working on just one side of this house. Uh, but this is the worst side that we're working on. And if we can get beyond that, um, you know, the other side of the house is bad too, but nowhere near as bad as this first side. But anyways, it's going to be super hot today as well. It's going to be 90 degrees. Beautiful day today. And I'm on my way to go get up with Tom. I've heard from Lucky this morning. Uh, Lucky said that they're going to be releasing him at about 920 this morning. And I told him I would be on my way to come get him and, you know, see where we're going from here. Uh, I think I mentioned, you know, Lucky wants to go back to Portsmouth. He's got a house that he can go stay at, a friend of his who is sober, uh, staying with the friend and the friend's mother. But, you know, he's mentioned to me that he doesn't want to go to any other kind of programs after this. He doesn't want to get on any kind of treatment. He says that he's gone through this before and that he can, you know, do this cold turkey and that's the way that he's going to do this. And whatever he decides to do is, is what he decides to do. Tom and I will help Lucky in any way that we can, but ultimately there's only so much that we can do. It's obviously not a good idea him going back to Portsmouth. He does want to go see Kurt. We're just going to have to see where things go from here. But I'm on my way to go get with Tom. I will film more once I get with Tom. And then let's go see Lucky, pick him up, and hear what he's got to share with us. All right, 9.23 in the morning, and I just pulled up at Tom's place. I uh, just got off the phone with Lucky, as a matter of fact, too. And he has been released. He's sitting in front of this place waiting on us. Uh, here comes Tom right now. Hey! Damn, look at you, boy. You're looking sharp. Nice, huh? Yeah, man. Popping tags, man. Popping tags. <laughs> All right, we got Tom with us. One thing that I want to mention real quick before we go any further with everything getting ready to happen is lest us not forget um, the situation that Tom is in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, it's getting uh, getting crunch time, man. <laughs> you know? Um, Let me just reiterate a couple of things real quick because there's a reason I bring this up. Tom is sleeping on a friend of his couch. Tom has a valid driver's license, no car, and a job where he's working two days a week. And he's also working with me here on After Prison Show, and I am paying him for his time. Though After Prison Show is basically like my painting business at this point, uh, I, a hemorrhaging money pit. But it's for the greater good. What the God? I thought the guy was naked. No, yep, pretty close to it, though. <laughs> Just seen this half-naked guy running by the window out, out of my peripheral, and I had some flashbacks to prison. Yikes. I'm sharing this with you because Tom has been such an asset to After Prison Show and also to Lucky Story. You know, you're a guy who is struggling your damn self, yeah. and yet here you are trying in any way possible to help somebody else. Well, I mean, I meant what I said. Every time that I got the opportunity to say this, and I'll say it again, be kind. It's free. It really is. There's nothing wrong with one addict helping another addict. It's the most cornerstone part of sobriety 
is for us to give back because we can't keep what we have without giving it away. I hate to use the cliches, but they're real. They're fact. And if I can help Lucky in any way, shape, or form, give him any direction, suggestions, and that was something I had to learn. Um, taking suggestions is hard, man. It really is. It's hard to take suggestions when you're knee deep, you know, in a swamp and you're supposed to be cleaning out the alligators. So, yeah. Powerful statement right there. I share all of this with you because look at what we've got going on here on After Prison Show. We've got Lucky and his story and the fact that he's getting ready to come out of this detox program and is going to need a lot of help and help that, you know, we're trying to provide, but, you know, what can we honestly do? Then we've got Tom right here who, you know, could use some help as well. Maybe help with a car. Uh, something that I've wanted to help Tom with. I've actually told Tom, you know, it's one of my biggest goals with everything that we're doing here on After Prison Show to help you get a car because if you get a car, you could help us do so much more with the channel. I, I've got selfish reasons for Tom getting a car, but ultimately it would be a beautiful thing for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would give me an opportunity to be able to see my kid maybe a little bit more often. Um, it would also give me an opportunity to um, do side jobs, things of that nature. I mean, you know, it all comes down to, you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm ready to be on disability. That's, I've already told you that I filed yeah. for disability, but that's going to take two years. <laughs> the lawyer has already told me that. So I'm doing what I'm doing right now until I can figure things out. And I mean, I make, I get paid basically $125 a week. I well, mean, yeah. Again, I'm sharing all of this with you because, you know, After Prison Show needs some help. Uh, we've brought back the channel memberships here on After Prison Show. We've been sharing uh, members-only exclusive content, giving early access to members, uh, also sharing bonus footage with the members as well. You know, I thought about maybe we could have some kind of a fund, an After Prison Show fund, but there goes Joe begging, which I'm not going to do. And I'm not going to look for that from you. I appreciate anybody who takes the time to watch these videos, you know, because that does help us. You know, we need these videos to get these views. Joe's doing this all for the views. We need these views. We need these monetized views that help, you know, us to be able to do anything. Obviously, when a video doesn't get but 10,000 views, you know, that video's not making shit. To put it into perspective for you, a video that gets 10,000 views is making us about $40. Whereas I'm usually paying whoever we've got in video $60 at the minimum to share their story. I'm sharing all of this with you because I just want to give you guys a little more, uh, um, what's the word? When you, transparency. Transparency. As to, you know, my attempts to get after prison show back on track and you know what we're doing here i want to tell you something else too they demonetized lucky going to detox youtube did that video made like 75 dollars and they demonetized it uh and that was a a, a gut wrench blow right because ultimately that was such a powerful video so well put together at least i thought that it was you know and ultimately we would hope that that video would be seen by the masses go viral make some good money off of that video and with that good money you know after prison show could certainly be getting back on its feet helping tom to do things helping lucky to do things helping others to do things where i'm going with this is just real quick, we got to get ready to go pick up Lucky. You're getting ready to see some wild ass content here on After Prison Show. You know, we're trying to help people, trying to feature stories. We've brought back the cooking videos. We're going to be telling the war stories and the prison stories again. We're going to have that going on. We're going to chronicle what's going on with people, do the vlog style videos. But we are going to take this thing to the absolute max. When you see what's coming, and you're going to know it when you see it, you're going to say, this is probably the greatest thing that I've ever seen in my life. I hope that's what you say. I hope the whole world says that. And the reason why we've got this type of content coming is because we need to get After Prison Show back on the map. Uh, if we're going to continue to do this and continue to try to do what we're doing here with the After Prison Show, we need some content that's going to perform. So I'm going to leave it with that for right now. Not sure when you're seeing this video. Hell, you might have already seen the 
crazy video in question already. But regardless, Tom, we're getting ready to go pick up Lucky. What do you think yes, about the fact? I think this is going to be the beginning of a really good success story. I am very hopeful. I am really, really cheering for this guy. I want to see something positive happen. But let's go ahead and make sure that we're being absolutely real about this situation. There is no guarantee to that at all. Right. Lucky completed the program. He was in there for five days. Where he goes from here is where the real battle is about to begin for this guy. We're gonna be there for him as much as we can, but if it don't work out, I mean, look, sobriety sobriety is what you, what you make out of it. You know what I'm saying? But like I said before, if you can't take suggestions, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for failure if you can't take suggestions. It's, uh -huh. you know, people say, people say it all the time. I, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. When I was in rehab, a guy came up to me and he said, hey man, you know, I'm just making a suggestion to you, Tom, and it's not, I'm not, it's not advice, it's a suggestion. You need to stop worrying about what the hell is going on out there and worry about what's going on in there. And I said, okay, all right. And that little small suggestion led to the sobriety that I have right now. Well, good for you, man. I don't want it to sound like I don't have confidence in Lucky maintaining the course, but you know, we've been down this road a lot of times. I've never seen anybody have the desire to get clean that Lucky appears to have. So I, I too am also very hopeful in this situation that this is a success story. How great would that be? Let's go get Lucky and let's go see what he's got to share with us. All right, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. We literally just pulled up to this place. Uh, traffic was a nightmare getting out here. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to make some room right here for old luck. Ah, got a bunch of shit back here. Anyways, let's go see Lucky. Back. No more monkeys. I feel like a million bucks, man. I'm telling you. Not my monkeys, not my circus. That's right. I feel like a million bucks. I mean, I'm telling you, I ain't felt this good in a long time, you look man. Good, bro. Thank you. I woke up this morning. I refused all the medication. They lost my shoe strings, man. <laughs> they probably threw them things away, man. Look at you, yeah. man. You're looking uh like a brand new guy out here, oh, man. Yeah. Well, I feel like a brand new guy, man. It's a new beginning. Look, we got the folder. Yeah. All my release stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this the first time that you're stepping out of this place? Uh, yeah. I've never been here before. Well, what I mean is, you've been, been in here I've for been, five days. Yeah. I've Did you come outside at all? Uh, yeah. I just now this morning. Just I mean, now they, this morning. Yeah, they let me out uh, about thirty minutes ago. So yeah, I, I've been sitting out here, dying for a cigarette. <laughs> well, we got you, man. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get up in the truck and get up out of here, man. All right, man. Lucky, you're gonna sit back here. That way, Tom can film. This side right Yep. All right. Yeah, you ain't got no cigarettes in there, do they? No, there's no smoking, man. Not even vaping or nothing. Mm. Whew, yeah. You got that camera going? Of course I do. Man, I'll tell you what. That's one of the hardest things I've done, man. Uh, tossing, turning, sweating, shitting, puking. Oh, man, it was terrible. But once I got over that hump, started feeling a little bit better yesterday. This morning I woke up energized, man. So well, I, re I, re I refused the medication this morning. I didn't need nothing. They was trying to give me Suboxone. I said, no, I don't want to. Like the whole point is I don't want to be chained to anything, you know? So I refused the Suboxone. And man, I just feel great, man. Well, let's get up out of here, man. Yeah. Yep. No more ball and chain on my ankle. There you go. Yeah. Sky's the limit, baby.
Shit, you better bet it. Sky right, is the limit. All right, we're good. One of the hardest things I ever did, man. You did it. It was one of the hardest things I ever did by choice. I've done it before getting locked up, you know, and that's that's real tough because uh, they don't give a shit in there, you know. They don't give you nothing to help. But uh, yeah, it was a it was, it was a difficult decision to walk in them doors, but I'm so glad I did it, man. It paid off, didn't it? Yes, it did. Lucky, do you remember anything about Friday when we came here? Man, I bits and pieces, man. I was so damn high, I couldn't hold my head up, man. Oh, and yeah. I did that on purpose because I didn't know, you know, how long it would be before they would give me any medications, and I just didn't want to be any sicker than it had to be. So, I got, how long was it before they gave you the medication? Uh, the next morning. So you already, yeah, that's what I you said. I was fine though, man. I had enough. I had, enough, I was, I was doped up, man. I didn't need anything till the morning, so. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't have any, any withdrawal symptoms until uh, I woke up the next morning. They, it was, they gave me phenobarbital, gabapentin, Ultram, uh, Valium, all kinds of shit. They were trying to give it to me this morning, and I, I said, I don't want it. I'm out of here, man. I don't need that shit no more. I don't, I don't have that monkey on my back. I, the whole time I was in there, I was fuzzy headed because all the medicine they had me on, man. I was, you know, it was hard. I get up and walk around. I, I didn't even want to get out of bed, you know. Today I woke up feeling so good, clear headed and everything. I, I just didn't want none of that shit, man. So, yeah, it's a new beginning, man. New beginning, and the sky is the limit. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, I mean, I got a lot to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you everything on the ride. Uh, Friday, we came here, we dropped you off, we filmed everything in relation to, you know, the conversation you and I had earlier that day that led to you making the phone call and then you going into the program. <clears throat> Man, I put that video together and when you see that thing, it's powerful, Lucky. Oh, I yeah. mean, it's powerful. People were commenting on that video saying that they were crying watching it. Really? It was an emotional video. And there were so many positive comments on it. Still a lot of comments coming in on that thing. And there are, everybody's rooting for you. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear it, man. It's, uh, it's touching to know there's people out there that care that I've never met in my life, you know. It's, uh, it's reassuring to know, man, that, you know, there's still kind people out there, man. You know, you see so much ugliness out here. It's easy to be cynical, but... You know, I'm, I'm not a cynical person, man. I'm a, I'm an optimist by nature. And uh, I'm a very spiritual person, man, so I know everything happens for a reason. And uh, I know there's big things coming, man. Big well, things are coming. Well, here we are. We've just picked you up. You spent five days in this program. You're clear-headed. You've got some sobriety going right this second. Yeah. You know, where are you going from here? Uh, I'm going to go back where I used to be allowed to be. Uh, you know, I told you before about the family that adopted me, right? Okay. Uh, that's where I'm going because i am uh, got my paperwork showing I'm clean now. I can go show Renee and she will uh, welcome me with open arms. So that's where I'm going, man. Well, let me jump in here real quick. All right. Um, Whenever you get done, let's put that window up, too. Okay. I can put it up a little bit now. It is obviously not the most ideal situation, you going back out to Portsmouth. Um, and, and you know that just as well as anybody could tell you that. Yeah. You know, Tom and I, we have talked to numerous resources. And, you know, there's other things that you could do if you wanted to do those things. However, we're not here to make these decisions for you. Uh, just here to let you know that these opportunities are, are there for you if you decided that you did want to get up out of Portsmouth. Okay. Um, anybody who sees this is probably going to say the same exact thing. You know, you going back around the same area where you were using it is definitely not a good idea, probably not a good idea. You know, 
But this is where you've got to go right this second. This is where you can go right this second. Right. You know, what is your, what's your plan? You, if you feel like you have a place to go, well, what's your plan well, I'm being gonna, there? Uh, you know, I'm going to find some work uh, first thing. I mean, I could put you to work today. Okay. Well, uh, sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, Do you want to work how today? About, I, 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 how, let, let's start tomorrow, man, because I want to, I, I want to, uh, you know, get back in touch with my, my, my surrogate family there. I want to spend a little bit of time with them. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, we start working first thing in the morning. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that's perfect. I mean, I got plenty of work going. I got a major residential job going Sounds on. Sounds right great, this man. I know how to do all kinds of stuff, man. I got a lot of, a lot of uh, skill sets. So anything you need me to do, I can do. Um, yeah, as far as going back to Portsmouth and being like, man, I'll tell you this, I can't run away from myself, man. Anywhere I go, if I want to find stuff I'll find it so I don't want to find it you know like it was so hard to get that monkey off my back I'm not in a big rush to get it back on there you know what I mean I hope you're not in any rush at all but uh, ultimately yeah. these are your decisions yeah I mean I, when, I, when I say that I mean you know I, I mean that that I don't want that monkey in my back I you know I'm not it, it was so hard to get it off I'm not that's not what I want definitely not what I want I'm not interested in using it all right now well and uh i want to hope i, I want to try to continue to inspire and motivate you to give you the best chance out here possible i'm not a superhero tom's not a superhero you know all we can do is just be a positive influence for you hopefully we know you want to go see kurt you know what's your thinking there yeah i'm gonna see kurt today I mean, I love the guy, man. I want to see him and, you know, let him know uh, how good it is to be on this side, man. I hope I can inspire him to do the same. I doubt it. But, you know, I got to at least try, right? Yeah. I mean. got to at least try, man. I love him. He's like a brother to me. Uh, so, yeah, I plan on seeing him at some point today. I know where to find him. Uh. You want a drink? Yeah, that'd be great. I want to plug my phone in, Mom. My phone's dead. You got a USB thing? Yeah, right here. There might be one right back there. Is might there be a, a USB back here? There might be a plug right here on this center console. I think there is. Okay, there's a big bucket in the way. Yeah, sorry. I should have got all that out of here. Okay. in real quick. Something I want to say, Lucky, it's uh, kind of important. I think, I think it might give you a little perspective on things. Okay. Somebody said this to me, I'm going to say it to you. No matter where you go, you bring you with you. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. So, even if you do go to Portsmouth, there's drugs there, we know this. There's drugs everywhere, man. Right. There's, there's, drugs there's everywhere. nowhere that there's not drugs. It's, it's you. Exactly. That's why I said I can't run away from myself. Yep. There you go. Yeah. You know, and I know this. I've got all the tools I need. This. I've been through rehabs and all that stuff. Uh, How many rehabs you been to, Lucky? Uh, two before this one. I've been to a long-term one, man. I was there for over 90 days. How they put me in a, an apartment and everything. And my insurance was so good that they didn't want to stop paying. You know, they didn't want to let me go because my insurance wouldn't stop paying. So I wound up, uh, you know, checking out before they released me, but it was uh, a couple of years before I started using again after I left there. Right. You know, the, the, the triggers that started me using has always been, you know, depression and loneliness and all that stuff. When I got out of prison, you know, I'm not from this area. So, you know, what I did is I, I jumped head first into work and, um, I was building the casino. I was working 70 hours a week, seven days a week. And that kept me busy and kept me clean, you know. When that ran out, I was on the streets and uh, I was lonely and depressed. And I was just, uh, you know, I started getting high, man. Yep. So, uh, you know, my, my plan is now to fill my time with, you know, positive things. 
Yeah, uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I've never seen one of those in real life. Look at that. What is that? Is that... Oh, what, what, is, what is that? It's a freaking, wow, that was cool as hell. That's a what Tesla that? truck. That's a Tesla truck. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. that's what that was, a Tesla truck. Never seen one. Yeah. So, um, just to give you a heads up, you know, I reached out to um, the crisis line for you. Okay. Uh, they told me that if you call today, right, um, tell them that you're experiencing chronic homelessness, um, that you just went through a clinic, did substance abuse, um, they would assist you any way they can okay. for the mental health conditions, anything like that, okay. as well as housing. Okay. So, I want you to keep that in mind. All right. Yeah, um, if for some reason it doesn't work out, where I'm going, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll uh, definitely uh, utilize that. You got a phone, all you gotta do is dial 988. 988. And if you need me to help you in any way, shape, or form, or uh, Joe, you just reach out to us and we'll help you with the tools. Okay. They're there, okay. trust me. Have you, excuse me, sorry Tom. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to these people at this house, this yeah. friend of yours? Yeah, I talked to Jeremy yesterday. I called him and let him know I was gonna be getting out today. So uh, Jeremy's my brother, man. Um, he's a uh, he's a character too. We'll we'll eventually we'll get him on camera, man, because he's a <laughs> he's a hell of a guy. He's a he's a character and a half. He's a very dramatic person. So uh, I want to include him in uh, you know the stuff that we got going on. Uh, you know, if when I do start my own uh, YouTube channel, he's definitely going to be a part of it. Yeah, you were telling me that yesterday when you called me. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I talked to Jeremy yesterday. Uh, he said he was gonna let his mom know, so she's uh, she knows. Uh, I haven't gotten to speak to her myself uh, yet, so I called uh, called Jeremy. Nobody answered, but he sleeps in a little bit, so that's the only number I have. I don't have uh, Renee's number, but. Uh, I'm pretty positive Renee's going to be happy to see me uh, clean and sober. Yeah. Now, like I told you, Lucky, and you probably don't even remember this because I told you this on Friday, but, you know, you going to that program was only part of this. Yeah. I mean, part of what this struggle and this, this journey is going to be, everything is going to be what's happening from here forward. You know, you went through this. You know how bad that that was. I can't even imagine how bad that that was. Oh, it was but, terrible. <laughs> but you did this. Yeah, I did. You said that you wanted to do this. You said that you were going to do this. You did this. So now it's all about making this worth what you just went through. Absolutely. And making it not for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely don't want to have all that pain I just went through being vain, man. Uh, yeah, I got, I got big plans, man. Were there a lot of people in there? No, going through actually, detox? Actually, there there was when I first got there, but they emptied out. They're pretty empty in there right now. Did a lot of the people just check out on their own and just say, you know, I'm not doing this? One guy, my roommate, uh, checked out AMA. Uh, that guy that Mike, the yeah, guy that we that met. was up there. Yeah, yeah he checked out uh, yesterday. He pitched a fit. He, uh, they weren't letting him out fast enough, and he started freaking out on them. They got him out of there. That's sad. He's, he's the only one I've seen check out uh, AMA. There's a couple other people on there that's uh, scheduled to be released today. It's almost like getting out of jail. Yeah, almost. It's real nice in there, though, man. They feed you real good. I'll tell you what. I didn't eat shit for the first three or four days, man. I couldn't eat. Uh, I think uh, yesterday... It was the first time I ate anything at all. It was just a little bit. I ate breakfast this morning. Uh, I, my stomach shrunk up quite a bit, so I can't eat very much, man. I'm getting full real fast. But uh, I'll tell you, man, I feel great, man. I really, ooh, I, I feel really good. I haven't felt this good in a long time, man. I feel energetic. I feel you know, optimistic about the future. Uh, I'm really excited, man. All right. Well, we're back where this all started from, as a matter of fact. And 
where Lucky is going to be staying at this friend of his house and this friend is not using is right around the same area where I first met Lucky at. I wasn't welcome there because I was using anymore. So uh, I'll be welcome there now. So literally, if you show this intersection right here, right there where that stoplight is, that's where I first met Lucky at. Kurt's not there. And, you know, we decided to go this way just in case Kurt was here because we know Lucky wants to see him. We were talking off camera about what that interaction is probably going to be like. And Kurt is a really good guy just in a really messed up situation. And, you know, we truly feel like, I truly feel like it, I'm sure Lucky does too, that, you know, when they see each other, you know, Kurt's probably going to tell Lucky, you, you probably don't want to be around me, which he shouldn't be if, you know, Kurt's going to continue doing what he's doing, which obviously that's what he wants to do. Yeah, we're going to have to go down the road, uh, take a right, and then a left. <clears throat> Lucky, what type of a chance do you give yourself? One through ten. Let's just use that. Like one, you know, not much of a chance, but ten, all the chance in the world. What do you give yourself on a one through ten of your chances of staying clean out here? I'd say about an eight, man. That's a realistic number. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend like uh, it's gonna be easy because I know it's not, but. I'm definitely going to give it everything I got, man. We going right here? Yeah, you can turn here. Oh, shit. No, you can't. God dang it. You can go up. You can take a ride up here. We need to be on that other side of that grassy knoll right there. Well, like I said, there's work for you tomorrow. Okay. You know, I know you've shared with me, you know, why you've fallen back into addiction because of depression, because of boredom. You know, I want to help to ensure that you're not just sitting around, you know, where you could fall back into that. I want to do anything I can to give you the best chance. Yeah, man, that's definitely, uh, definitely the plan, man. I'm going to jump right back into work and tomorrow. I just want to use today to get, you know, spend some time with my, my, my people here. Um, I've been disassociated with them for, you know, several months now because of my using. Take a right here. This is a... Well, I hate the fact that we're just getting ready to go drop you off and, you know, that's where we're going to wrap this up at. But that's all we can do. You know, we're not here to force the agenda, force the issue or anything like that. I told you we were going to be a positive thing for you I truly feel like we've done that already and the ball is entirely in your court I got faith in you I, I do I, I know that you want to be clean I'm sure there'll be some comments on this saying you know you're probably going to fall back into the same thing or you know I, I hope that we don't have a lot of those type of comments I hope that people are just continuing to be positive about this because what you just went through was about as positive as it gets it was it was tough, man, and uh, I tell you what, I'm not in any hurry to have to do that again. So, uh, yeah, uh, staying clean is definitely the, in my future, man. Like I, I don't want that monkey on my back. That's why I refused to box him. All that stuff is just another chain, you know, another ball and chain, and uh, I, I can't have that, man. I got some traveling I'm gonna be doing in the near future, so uh, I can't. You know, I, I can't have a monkey on my back and do that. It's just, uh, it's too hard. The chase, the whole chase, I just, I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm over it. Uh, that house right there with the wooden fence, that's where we're, that's where we're going. This one or yeah, this one? No, the one right there with the wooden fence. This is, that's it. <coughs> so just uh, go ahead and stop right here. It looks like a nice house. We're not going to show it. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice house. Good people. All right, Lucky, we're going to sit right here and make sure that you're good to go here. All right. Let me hop out. Bring my, bring my 
folder with me so I can Lucky. show it to Renee. Good luck to you, brother. Thank you much. You know what I'm saying? Thank you guys for everything, man. Reach out to us, man, please. Oh, oh, definitely, man. Definitely. Give me just a second. I'm not going to show the house. Got those fresh whites on. Got them fresh whites. No shoelaces like he just came out the damn jail. Icy, icy whites. Yeah. <laughs> Look, there's not a lot else that we can do. Lucky doesn't want to get nothing to eat. Um, he wants to reconnect with these people who had once given him an opportunity and a, and a place to live. And that's all that we can do. Tomorrow, I'm putting him to work. You know, he wants to work. And, you know, we'll continue to follow where he's going from here. I'm hopeful that, you know, he stays the course. We'll do everything that we can to help motivate him to do that. But ultimately, it's going to be his decision where he goes from here. So, you know, we're going to see. Right now, we're just waiting to make sure that he's good to go in here. And that's it. What do you think, Tom? I'll tell you, I think that, um, I think he stands a good chance based on his demeanor, um, so far. As long as he connects with you, uh, tomorrow and goes to work and keeps himself busy and occupied, I think there's a good chance. And as long as he stays in contact with us. I know he's going to stay in contact. That's not even, I, I don't feel like he's going to disappear at all. You know, I think he's the type of guy, oh my God, this dude looks crazy as hell. All right. Here comes Lucky. It's a nice truck, ain't it? <laughs> all right, guys, I'm good to go. All right, bro. Lucky, give me a call a little later on. I'll check in with you. All right. He don't look like a user. No, he uh, he's clean, man. His mom made him. <laughs> His mom made him, and she's gonna make him leave too. <laughs> he's locked out so of the house. So he went right through now. this. He went through Virginia Beach psych also. Oh wow. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, Lucky, Thank if I don't so get much. you that camera by today, I'll have it for you first thing in the morning. All right, cool, man. Hey, oh, shit, I got to get that microphone off you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we'd be filming the whole damn day with you. <laughs> there you go, bud. Hey, let me uh, get a little shot of us just saying goodbye, man. All right. Even though this ain't goodbye, this is... Uh, no, see you later. See you later. Proud of you, brother. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for everything. You look like a brand new man. I am. I feel like one too. Well, go enjoy your day. Thanks a lot, man. And I'll talk with you a little later on and we'll pick it up tomorrow. Sounds good. Hey, I'll, I'll talk be. with you, buddy. Yep. You can right, hold Joe, on to that. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. How do you feel about it? I feel as good as I, as I can. Um, I feel like He did the program, yep. and that was a big step. Yep. Um, I feel like he's got a chance. Being in Portsmouth is not a good thing at all, but like he said, being anywhere, you know, it could be problematic if he wants to find it. Uh, I don't worry that Lucky will just disappear on us. I don't worry that he, he's a honest guy. So if he stumbles, he'll, he'll tell us. Um, and I hope that he doesn't do that. Right. What? This? Yeah. I already showed that. I showed that earlier. Did you? Yep. That's the picture that Kurt gave me. Yeah. All right. I'm going to wrap it up from here and keep you guys posted as to what's going on with Lucky.